Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother Zach Wild. This is your brother Kafa Folk. We welcome you. Um, we thank you. And we, um, if you did tune in with us, uh, we are sorry for last week's Shabbatah. We did not hear. Um, and we are and we're also sorry for the lesson that was the, the prior Shabbatah day, before last Shabbatah day. Um, we will be re-recording that video and uploading it um, by the grace of Allah. So, uh, if you could just bear with us. Uh, it was a great lesson, and we, we want everybody to be able to experience and, and get the information, the edification that was from that lesson. Um, I hope you're able to hear me correctly and very well. Um, I was having some difficulties with my mic. Uh, Brother Cosmo's mic should be working very, very well today. Um, if anybody can't hear me, please let me know um, so we can fix that. And if anything going on with the stream, please let us know so that we can fix it in advance. Um, and for that, we thank you. Uh, Brother Kasifo, we have a great lesson today. Uh, how can we be saved? And we're going to go into some very great information. You know, all scripture is for edification. We just love the scriptures and everything it brings forth for us to implement in our lives, in our daily day-to-day tasks. So uh, without further ado, Brother Kasifo. Right. So in this discussion, we're going to understand salvation and what it is and how we can get it and when it shall come. These are important things to understand here in these times because we've discussed that we can be perfect and been working on building ourselves in the faith. And it's essential to know the salvation that we're looking for. When is it going to come? What is it all about so that we can have that in mind, knowing what we're pressing towards. So firstly, uh, what is the salvation of Allah Hayyam? Let's look at the scriptures to see what that is. Um, you know, better, better yet, who that is. Can we look in Luke chapter 2, verse 25 to 32, please? And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. The Spirit was inspiring this man. And let's see how this thing goes. Verse 26. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Right. Continue, please, and read on through. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Yahshua, to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed Allah and said, Lord. See that he took Yahshua up into his arms. Continue on, please. Now let it thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. He saw the salvation of Allah Hayim. So scripturally, the salvation of Allah Hayim is Yache himself. All right? Continue, please. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. And it's for all, right? A light, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. So we see that this salvation, this man that I have sent, is for all nations. And that's what the scriptures agree to. Can we read John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, please? For Allah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He was sent to save the world, the children, and those are the children of many nations that believe on him. Continue, please. For Allah sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And what is this salvation that we're looking for through him? Can we read more inspiration by the Spirit in Luke chapter 1, verse 67? To We're going to be in that chapter. And we're going to go through a couple of precepts to understand what was being spoken of. Luke chapter 1, verse 67 and 68, please. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, 
Blessed, this is John's father. Blessed be the right. Lord, Allah, I am a Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Note this, he had visited and redeemed his people. The mystery was revealed that his people are not only the Israelites. So this redemption is not only speaking of Israel, but it's for all his people of many nations. Can you read Zechariah <laughs> chapter 2, verse 11, please? And many nations shall be joined to Ahia in that day and shall be my people. And I many will... nations shall be his people. Sorry. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Is, is not just Israel. This was the revelation that was shown to Paul when he spoke of the mystery of the Gentiles being fellow heirs. All right, continue, please. And I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that a higher of hosts has sent me unto thee. So we are being called out of all nations, and even Paul the apostle helped us understand this in Romans chapter 9, verse 24 through 25. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Right. As he saith also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. There we see that it's for all this redemption that Zechariah in Luke chapter 1 was prophesying of. Let's go back to Luke chapter 1 and see what this salvation is. We know who the salvation is, but let's see what Yache is bringing for his people. Uh, go from Luke chapter 1, verse 69 to 75, please. Luke chapter 1, verse 69. And hath raised up and horn a salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. That's Yache. That's the horn of salvation. Even the salvation of Allah. Continue, please. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That's the salvation we're looking for. To be saved from our enemies and the hand of all that hate us. Continue on, please. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. All right. The oath which he swear to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. As you notice, he said in verse 73, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. This is, confirms that this covenant, this promise is for many nations because Abraham is the father of many nations. This promise and this deliverance to come is not only for the Israelites, but for all that believe on that promised seed, even Christ Yache, salvation of Allah. Hayim. So we see what we're looking for. The salvation we're waiting for from Yache is that we would be delivered out of the hand of our enemies to serve him without fear in holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our life. The salvation we're looking for. When shall it come? As we see now, we understand what we're looking for. We understand who is bringing it and who it is. Because it's Yache in us, as we've discussed in the lessons past. Now, let's see when this shall actually come. Can we look in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 31, 32, please? Sorry. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. This process already started in the days of the apostles when you read Acts chapter 2, verse 16. So prophecy is already in motion. All right, continue, please. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The, the, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of a higher come. So this still has to come. This hasn't come yet. The blood moon 
And that sun being turned to darkness doesn't happen until the sixth seal here in these end times, according to Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. So mind you, this is still before the actual day that the Lord comes back. So the war won't be over yet. So we would still be seeking that salvation to come after the sixth seal. Yet in those times after the sixth seal, the scriptures declare how we can be saved. When we continue reading, please. Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Ahias shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as Ahiah hath said, and in the remnant whom Ahiah shall call. Then we see salvation shall come by whoever shall call upon the name of Ahiah, they shall be delivered. This helps us understand that. The name of Ahia is important for our salvation. And the scriptures agree. If we look at Psalms chapter 20, verse 1, in the words of David the prophet, where the Psalms that were inspired by the Spirit, as he attested. And, uh, when you're ready, please. Psalms chapter 20, verse 1. Ahia, hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the Alahim with Jacob defend thee. This is, there's power in the name to save us from our troubles. And even David spoke of how he trusted in this salvation to come in the name in Psalms, what is it? Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 4, where he has said, I will call on Ahaya, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. This is the the simplicity of our faith, trusting in that name to deliver us. And the gospel also agrees with the preaching of David. When we read the words of the apostle Paul and the accounts of the acts of the apostles. Can we read Romans chapter 10, verse 9, please? But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahweh, and shalt believe in thine heart that Allah hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So it starts with confession and belief. And it has to be the name Yache. There's none other name when we can be saved. But by his, according to scripture, can you read Acts chapter 4, verse 12, please? Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's none other name. This lets us know that the name Yache is so essential for our salvation. Just merely knowing the name Ahaya is not enough for us to be saved. We actually have to know his name because he is the salvation of Allah. Ahaya has glorified him and exalted him above all. It's a revelation by the apostles that the name Yache will save in these end times and none other. Can you continue reading Romans chapter 10, verse 10 through 13, please? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Right. For the scripture, for the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. He is the Elohim of the Jews and the Gentiles. So anyone who calls on Yache and on him with their whole heart shall be delivered. Continue, please. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Faith in his name alone saves because he has been given a name above all names. Can you read? Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, please. You understand why that name above all? Wherefore, Allah also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. And these testimonies agree. Now we're going to jump into the Shepherd of Hermas parable 9 to understand how important the name Yahshua is to our salvation that we're looking for to come from him. Uh, Hermas parable 9, chapter 12. Verse 2 through 6, please. 
The son of Elohim is older than all his creation, so that he became the father's advisor in his creation. Therefore also he is ancient. But the gate, why is it recent, sir? Say I. You want to give a backstory? Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what Hermas has seen, he's seen a vision of the church being built. The foundation is on an old, great white stone. And then there's a brand new gate sitting right in front of the tower being built. And that's what Hermas is inquiring about. And as the angel told him, the old stone is the son of Alahim. And it's ancient because he was there from the beginning. And now he's explaining to him, why is the gate looking brand new? And he's going into the understanding on that. But the gate, why is it recent, sir, say I? Because, say, if he, he was made manifest in the last days of the consummation. Therefore, the gate was made recent, that they which are to be saved may enter through it into the kingdom of Elohim. So we see that Yache, he came in the last days, and sees the gate was recent, and it's through him, and through him those that are, what do you say, those that, May those that are to be saved may enter through it into the kingdom of Allah. Hopefully, thus far we see how important Yache is. He is the salvation of Allah. It's his name that is the only name by wherein we might be saved, and it's only through him that we can enter into the kingdom. All right, continue, please. Didst thou see, saith he, that the stones which came to the gate have gone to the building of the tower? But those which came not through it were cast away again to their own place. I saw, sir, say I. Thus saith he, No one shall enter into the kingdom of Allah except he receive the name of his son. This is all important for us because we want to understand how we can be saved. And it's essential to know that we cannot enter unless we receive that name, Yache. All right, continue, please. For if thou wishes to enter into any city, and that city is walled all around, and hath one gate only. Canst thou enter into that city except through the gate which it hath? Hmm? Why, how, sir, say I, is it possible otherwise? If then thou canst not enter into the city except through the gate itself, even so, saith he, a man cannot enter into the kingdom of Allah except by the name of his son that is beloved by him. This is why it's essential for us to have this name with us. Continue, please. Did thou see, saith he, the multitude that is building the tower? I saw it, sir, say I. That multitude is the multitude of angels. Okay, continue, please. They say if he. Oh, he said it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they say if he are all glorious angels. With thee, then, Ahiah is walled around. Right. But the gate is the son of Elohim. There is this one entrance only to Ahiah. No one then shall enter in unto him otherwise than through his son. That's the only way. Let's jump to verse, chapter 14, verse 5 and 6 as well, please. That's Shepherd of Hermes, prayer, but nine, verse 14, verse 5. Listen then, saith he, the name of the son of Elohim is great and incomprehensible and sustaineth the whole world. This name is powerful. Continue. If then all creation is sustained by the son of Elohim, what thinkest thou of those that are called by him and bear the name of the son of Elohim and walk according to his commandments? Notice what he said there. Those that are called and bear the name of the son of Allah so they put on his burden and also walk according to his commandments. So this lets us know is not only believing on the name. We have to have the name. We have to believe on it, but we actually have to walk according to his commandments. This is essential. We need this to understand how we can be saved. Continue, please. Seest thou then what manner of man he sustaineth? We, uh, 
I'll stop right there. I'm definitely going with Odin. <laughs> the we just he he was specific to say that they walk according to his commandments. He let us know what manner of man Yache actually sustains. It takes the ones that believe on him and keep his commandments. These are the ones that he actually sustains to endure this trial to be saved. This is essential for us to know what we have to do to be held by him, to be kept from the evil, to be delivered from our enemies. These are, this is the keys for us that we may be sustained by the spirit of Christ in us. All right. Continue, please. Even those that bear his name with their whole hearts, he himself then has become their foundation. And he sustaineth them gladly because they are not ashamed to bear his name. Notice the joy Yache takes to, to sustain us when we keep his commandments, when we bear his name with our whole heart. In bearing his name, we are bearing his character, bearing his spirit, that meekness and lowliness of heart. That's so we can understand what it means to bear his name, to represent him in all righteousness. When he does it with joy, when we keep his commandments. Faith in his name is a start of working out our salvation. But as we see now, there's more to attaining unto the salvation in his name. Let's jump to Shepherd of Hermas chapter 13, verse 2 through 3, please. Still on parable 9, right? Yes, we're still in parable nine. We're jumping in here to see what else is needed. We know we need the name of the son of Allah and we have to receive it. We know we have to keep his commandments so that he may sustain us gladly. But what else is needed for our salvation to enter into this kingdom? Let's check it out. The Shepherd of Hermes, parable nine, chapter 13, verse two. And these virgins, who are they? They say of he, are holy spirits. And no man could otherwise be found in the kingdom of Elohim unless these shall clothe him with their garments. For if thou... That is key for us to understand. That was a key part to hear. No man can otherwise be found in the kingdom of Elohim unless these shall clothe him with their garments. Right? Sorry about that, brother. Yeah. I'm about to get my, get my jump in on the right time here. All right. For if thou receive only the for if thou receive only the name, but receive not the garment from them, thou profitest nothing. It would be all in vain, brothers and sisters. If we receive not these garments, it would be in vain. And now I will we understand why here coming forward. Continue, please. For these virgins are powers of the son of Elohim. If therefore That's why. Mm -hmm. If therefore thou bear the name, and bear not his power, thou shalt bear his name to none effect. This is what keeps us from hypocrisy, because we'll not only have the name, but we'll actually have the power of the Son of Allah with us to ensure that we are bearing his name wholeheartedly, and it would not be to none effect. Continue, please. And the stone saith he, which thou didst see cast away. These bear the name, but clothe not themselves with the raiment of the virgins. Right, continue, please. Of what sort, sir, say I, is their raiment? The this is important to know. <laughs> this is essential to know, because if they got cast away, I need to know what those clothes are that they didn't have. Right. Continue, please. The names themselves, say if he, are their raiment. Whosoever beareth the name of the Son of Elohim ought to bear the names of these also. So even the Son himself beareth the names of these virgins. So do we have to be as he is? This is a part of putting his yoke upon us. He bears the names of these virgins, therefore we have to do the same. And of course, now we want to know what are these names. This is essential for our salvation here. Let's jump to chapter 15, verse 1. To three, please. Declare to me, sir, say I, the names of the virgins and of the women that are clothed in the black garments. We'll touch on them in a moment, the black garments. Let's continue, please. 
Here, saith he, the names of the more powerful virgins, those that are stationed at the corners. These are the garments we need, brothers and sisters. The first is faith. Jesus. Let me know if you want me to keep going if you want me to stop. The first is faith. That's the first and greatest one because we first have to believe on the name of the Son. That's the first step into it. All right. And the second. Believing on that power. Continue. And the second continent. This is where we grow in being the temperance, not the temperance, but the continence of walking in the faith, learning that self control. Continue, please. And the third power. The power to change. This is essential because as you're working out your salvation with a good heart, honest and good heart, bringing forth fruit with patience, power starts to come in and bring that change about in us. All right, continue, please. And the fourth, long suffering. This is all essential to overcome for many, all the nations, including Israel, long suffering, mighty and powerful, even strength of Allah he's long suffering and patient toward all because he's a lover of souls himself continue please but the other station between them have these names simplicity mm -hmm. godless you run through the right purity cheerfulness truth understanding concord and love As you notice, these here, if you got the first four, the rest are going to come with it. You'll be built up to the rest to attain unto that last and final one, which is love. And we know love is the bond of perfectness. Continue, please, bro. He that bear these names and the name of the son of Allah shall be able to enter into the kingdom of Allahim. This is, we have scriptural reference and confirmation to know what we need to enter. We need the name and we need to bear his power. These garments, the names of these virgins and the name of the son of Allahim and keeping his commandments. This will cause us to enter. Now, we have also admonition on how to be withheld from entering the kingdom. Even if we have the name, because we have to endure in this trial, we cannot be found reprobate. And the women clad in black, these are the women who, if we are found with them attached to us or in their garments, we cannot enter the, the kingdom of Allah, even though we may have the name of the son of Allah. Let's continue reading for this exhortation in verse 3 of chapter 15, please. Here saith he, likewise, the names of the women that wear the black garments. Of these also, four are more powerful than the rest. The first is unbelief. That's the chief. So you see, the, the battle starts with faith. And then, whether one walks in faith, you can build, we can build towards love. But if we walk in unbelief, we also build towards the works of Satan as we're going to read about here. Continue, please. The second, intemperance. That causes us to not be able to be temperate and endure the trial of bearing the fruits, as opposed to faith, which brings us onto continence to be able to work the fruits in righteousness. Continue, please. The third, disobedience. It would be intemperate and unfaithful. It leads to not being able to keep the law. Because we cannot be in subjection unto the law of righteousness. Continue, please. And then, oh, no, I apologize. In the, first, in the fruits, in the Holy Spirit's power was the third, right? The power is what brought about change. But then you see in the women clad in black, through unbelief and intemperance, it keeps us in disobedience. Change can't come like we need to because we didn't start with the proper process. Um, continue, please. The fourth, deceit. And we sure get deceived. 
because we may think we're going along the right way, but we've been blinded because we haven't come to the knowledge of the truth. Continue and let's see what these four chief women clad in black will lead us on to. And their followers are called sadness, wickedness, wantonness, irascibility, falsehood, folly, slander, and hatred. This is the this is the direction we go when we have not taken the son of taken on the name of the son of Allah with our whole heart and keeping his commandments faithfully. Let's continue reading on what will become of us if we take this route. The servant of Allah that bear these names shall see the kingdom of Allah, but shall not enter into it. So as you see, one may even see it. One may see the right way. But through having any one of these women clad in black dwelling with us, we will be kept from the kingdom. Because we talked, we talked about how we, we can be perfect. We have to seek unto that perfection. We are, this process is walking forward, seeking our salvation daily in order that we may be perfected through the beloved who became perfect through his own suffering. So this is essential for us to understand that we cannot have any of these women clad in black with us to keep us from the kingdom of Allah. Now, let's check an exhortation. Understanding these things, let's look at an exhortation from John the Apostle. We're jumping into the Acts of John. Because what he said here was essential for the topic of, at hand. He wished not to be grieved nor to be insulted or to have treachery done against him and without punishment. And he gave us exhortations to understand how it's through disobeying his commandments that he knows insults from us. He knows dishonor. He knows treachery and he knows punishment. So now we're jumping in to see how we can not be in this manner towards our Lord, but to be pleasing unto him. Because John exhorts us, let not therefore our Allah be grieved. And jumping in, in the Acts of John chapter 14, picking up to see what causes him to rejoice so that we may be pleasing unto him. Uh, can you pick up from there, Zach, while let him rejoice along with us? Let him rejoice along with us. Because we conduct ourselves well. Amen. You can continue, please. Let him be glad because we live in purity. Let him rest because we behave reverently. So we see how we can help him cease from being grieved with us, to rejoice with us, to be glad with us, to be pleasing unto him. Let's continue, please. Let him be pleased because we live in fellowship. All right. We see how the fruits of the Spirit bring us into union of happiness with him. All right. Continue, please. Let him be pleased. Excuse me. Let him smile because we are sober minded. These are great exhortations for us to understand our Lord better. Continue, please. Let him be delighted because we love. Amen. These Continue, please, brother. These things, brother, I communicate to you. Pressing on to the work set before me, already, already perfected for me by the Lord. So we see that John is not only exhorting us of the things to please our Lord, but he's also working toward it himself. All right, let's continue with his exhortations, please. But what else have I to say to you? Keep the sureties of your Allah. Keep his presence that shall not be taken away from you. We how uh, we understand now how to keep his presence. It's by keeping his commandments, believing on his name, wearing the garments of the twelve uh, holy spirits, doing things, being in as it says here, conducting ourselves well. Um, which will cause them to rejoice with us, um, living in purity, which will cause them to be glad, behaving reverently, which will give him rest, 
living in fellowship, which is pleasing to him and causing him to smile by being sober minded and causing him to be delighted when we walk in love. These things are going to cause his presence to stay with us when we keep his sureties. Yet, if we do not these things, I'm sorry, if I'm sorry, if we continue in these things, there's a reward for us. And you, let's see what, what that is as we continue reading, please. And if ye sin no more, he will forgive you what you have done in ignorance. That's the reward. By causing this joy, bringing this joy unto him, bringing forward these fruits and making him happy, we'll be forgiven of the sins we had committed in ignorance. All right, continue, please. But if, after ye have known him, and he has had compassion upon you, you return to the like courses, even your former offenses will be laid to your charge. And you should have no portion or compassion before his face. So we see the what's set before us. We can make him happy and do the things that please him to be forgiven for all our former trespasses. On the other hand, if we come to know him and has partaken in his compassion and then turn back to our former life, then there'll be no compassion for us when we stand before his face in the judgment. Understand what it means to know him. First, there's a process we go through to get to know him, to learn his doctrine, to learn his ways, to learn the fruits. And he has compassion on us as we're learning. That's why just men fall is seven times. But when we come to that knowledge of the truth, when we understand what's going on, understand what the calling is and what we're doing, if then we turn back, there remains no more sacrifice for our sins because now we're sinning willfully. It's presumptuous sin. And there's, I think it's actually the lesson, all unrighteousness is sin, Zach, where it talks about the difference between presumptuous sin, where there's no, you can't pray for that because it's done with knowledge. So you can reference that lesson, all unrighteousness is sin, for better understanding of how coming to the knowledge of the truth and then transgressing, there's no sacrifice, but there's compassion as he has here for us as we're learning the doctrine so that we can get to know him. And then once we know him, we stay abiding in that knowledge of him unto the end for our salvation. And it's essential for us because many of us who've read the Bible, the verse in Matthew chapter seven, about verse 20 to 24, talks about how in the end, many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? Yet he shall profess unto us, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Hopefully now, through this lesson, we can understand why he would say he never knew us, even though we know his name, even though we may call him Lord or Adonai or Master. Yet, if we have not those holy spirits clothed upon us, and if we keep not his commandments, if we do not the things that please him, if we're not living in, unit, in fellowship, if we're living in purity, if we're not well behaved, if we're not we're behaving ourselves reverently, if we're not honoring his commandments because we love him these are the things that will cause us to be told that he didn't know us because we did not put on his power and bear his name with our whole heart so hopefully this gives us understanding as we're trying to attain unto this salvation this hopefully this helps us understand what all this salutates what all this salvation consists of that we're looking for um Now that we see there's more to this salvation and that what is needed is for us to exemplify our faith through our works to make Allah I am happy with us, we have understanding. And even in the scriptures, when we look, the converts of old, they were taught not only to believe on the name, but they also were made acquainted with the word of Allah so that they would have a guide and understand the calling and how to walk in his ways to endure the trial of, trial of salvation. We're going to look in Luke chapter, I'm sorry, look in Acts chapter 16 to 32, so we can see that this process 
that we're embarking on is the same process that people went through before. It wasn't just believing and that was it. It was belief and then building on that belief with works of righteousness, working toward making our Lord happy and part in not making his grace for us be in vain and not bearing his name to none effect. Uh, when you're ready, Zach, well, Acts 16, 30 to 32, please. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This is a question, an essential question with the topic we're discussing today. What must I do to be saved? Continue, please. And they said, Believe on the Lord, Yahweh Christ, and, be, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. That's the first thing, belief. Even the first Holy Spirit is faith. So we see, believe on the Lord, Yahweh Christ, and thou and thy house shall be saved. So there's step one. Let's continue to see what else came with it, please. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. So we see, after that belief comes the understanding of the doctrine, understanding of the gospel. This is the process we have to go through. And then, after the understanding of the gospel, when a man knows the cost, of the journey that he's partaken in, then when one has that understanding, then you're actually ready for baptism. Uh, can you continue reading, please? He took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his, he and all his straightway. And there we see the process that we're going through here as well. We believe on the name. Because the scripture said, if you believe with all your heart that he, he that Yahweh rose from the dead and that we shall also be saved, we believe on that and then we get knowledge of the gospel. We have the word of faith preached unto us. And then knowing that, we go forward unto baptism because now we know what we're fighting against. We know what we're involved in and we can go forward in wisdom and bring forth fruit with patience. All right. And Continue, when, please. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in Allah with, with all his house. So there we see the how that man and his all his house is embarking on that joy that Yahche has for us that'll have that'll be more full. So the faith in his name purges our former sins so that we can go forth in peace, working out our salvation by growing in the fruits of patience. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about how it's his blood that purges our conscience. So that's why the faith in his name is so essential. Firstly, to purge our conscience from the form of guilt so that we can go forward working out our salvation. And we have in the scriptures where we see that it's through people's faith that their sins are forgiven. We look at the example of the woman who was with Yache in Luke chapter 7. Verse 47 to 40, I mean to 50, please. Wherefore say I unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much, but the whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. So that lady, she had believed on him. And in repentance of her sins, she loved much. And we know the goal of this walk is to attain unto love, which is charity, the bond of perfectness. Hence, we've seen for the much love she's abounded in, her sins that were many were forgiven. Continue, please. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. Continue, please. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that, that forgives sins also? And he, he gave the woman more understanding. Though they were sitting there doubting, he gave he gives us an understanding of why this woman had attained to such love to have her sins forgiven. What was it that strengthened her? Where was where did her faith, where did it start for her? Let's see what Yache says to her in verse 50. And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. It was through faith that she attained unto such love. That's why believing on the Lord Yache is the first step to being saved. Her faith in his blood and the hope that's in him that she could be redeemed 
from her transgressions, from all her enemies, from all the spirits that were working against her, had brought her unto the love that abounded to the point where the Lord had compassion on her to forgive her and send her forth in peace. And as we read before, Allah Hayyam sent his son into the world to save it, not condemn it. And that woman is a great example of how faith brings unto love so that we may be saved and not condemned. As John 3, verse 17 and 18 showed, that's why Yachi was sent into the world. Can you read that, please? She said, no man, Lord. And Yachi said... John, hold on. Is oh. John 3, John 3 and 17 and 18, is that there for you or no it's there i thought you i thought you had just read it uh okay oh no i i, I just spoke on it okay. sorry john 3 and 17 for allah sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Amen. he that please he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Allah. And we know we read in Hermas of how important the name of the Son of Allah is. We've seen in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, there's none other name when we can be saved. So we see how we would be condemned already if we didn't believe on the name of the only begotten Son. Yet we also understand now that along with our belief, we have to go forth and sin no more to avoid this condemnation. As John attested that if we do the things that please him and sin no more, we'll be forgiven for all our former trans sins of ignorance. Yet, if we return unto the former way after having known him and received compassion from him, there's no more sacrifice for sins. And Yache, when we when he when he come when we come to him, he exhorts us to go forth and sin no more as well. Uh, John chapter eight, verse eleven, please. She said, No man, Lord. And Yahshua said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. That's what we're called unto. This is the process that we're working towards. We don't want to offend his sacrifice for us. And that's what Paul exhorted us on in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 31. Please, you can go ahead and read through that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall ye be Thought worthy, who have trodden underfoot the son of Elohim, and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despise unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. He, may, he has made an atonement for us to sanctify us if we continue in the faith by good works. We've seen how if we fall away after coming to the knowledge of him, there's no, there's no more sacrifice and we have a fearful looking for judgment. That's why we have exhortation to continue going forward in righteousness so that we may be saved through faith and by our good works. Can you read Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23, please? Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things of things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled. We've all been reconciled. Remember, we talked about how his blood purged our conscience. That reconciled us unto him to have a clean slate to start over and work that salvation out. So he brought us back to him through his blood. Continue, please. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and 
unreprovable in his sight. So the purpose of his death was to present us holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. And that's done through obeying his commandments and being clothed with the Holy Spirit, bearing the fruits of the Spirit, so that we may have all his power with us and that he may rejoice in us, knowing that we are doing the things that please him. Continue, please. And ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Now, notice that if you continue in the faith, that, was, that if was, we would be presented holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if we continue in the faith grounded and unsettled and not moved away from the hope i'm re repeating what it says so we can be sure to understand we can't be presented holy and unblameable and unreprovable if we don't continue grounded in the faith if we don't continue work in righteousness building in the fruits of the spirit and putting on those holy garments and keep growing forward we're not going to be presented holy. We'll not attain unto perfection. We will not be saved. So this is important for us to understand what it takes to actually attain unto this salvation. We have to continue in the good works of our Lord, continue in the things that make him happy so that we may be acceptable unto him and glorify his name. If we rebel... And are not willing to do these things, according to scripture, we shall perish. Uh, can you read Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, please? If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of Ahiah hath spoken it. This is what's essential for us to understand. This is the word of the Lord preached unto us. Can you read the Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to, and 9 and verse 13, please? Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Yahshua, and shall believe in thine heart that Allah hath raised him from the dead, that shall be saved. And now we have better understanding of what that all entails. It starts with that belief. Now we have understanding of the process. And in the end, verse 13 will be fulfilled. Continue, please. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And now we know what goes with that it's not the name alone but it starts with the name and our power is through the name now we understand whose salvation is it's the actual we understand what salvation we're looking for deliverance from our enemies and them that hate us that we may serve the lord without fear all the days of our lives in holiness and righteousness we, we understand what it takes to get to this salvation it's you have to have faith in the name that's where it starts we have to learn the doctrine and walk in it and turn from the things that dishonor him and that grieve him and that call our trespasses unto him or treachery unto him and that are punishments rather to turn on the things that make him rejoice that give him joy that make him smile that make him delighted that please him so that we and in doing these things we will turn from our sins and in the end because we've turned from our sins and done the things that please him and come to know him and his compassion he'll forgive us for all our sins done in ignorance and we understand that now and know on the opposite end if we don't do those things we won't be forgiven for our former sins now knowing all this when is this salvation coming we hear in these end times, when do we get to have that salvation to be delivered from our enemies and all them that hate us to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life? Let's see when it's going to come according to our Lord. In Matthew, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 13, verse 9 to 13, please. Mark chapter 13, verse 9. 
But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. This time to come, this is going to happen during the time of the false prophet. This is why it's essential for us to seek our salvation with fear and trembling now to do the things that please him so that we can make it to the false prophet getting here. Continue, please. And the gospel and the gospel must first be published among all nations. And that's going to happen because the two witnesses is going to preach for the 1260 days before the false prophet even comes. Continue, please. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate. For whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit. That's what's going to come in that time of the false, spirit, false prophet. The Spirit is going to empower people to speak words of life. All right? Continue, please. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son. And children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. As Yahweh said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So you can see in times, it's going to be, come, people are going to be giving each other up unto death. Continue, please. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So there we see when this salvation shall come and how it shall come is by if we endure unto the end, we shall be saved. We have to make it to that end time. We have to make it to that time of the false prophet where we can die at his hands and be and fulfill that perfection of the calling unto us for those who are appointed to die and those who are appointed to live. Speaking of the 144,000 men of the house of Israel and the, um, the Gentiles, the innumerable multitude that are going to make it to see Yache literally come. Everybody has their lot. May we be worthy to be counted, to be a part of something pertaining to Yache's lot. Uh, so, you know, it's already happening. Uh, it says, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. When you speak any words of righteousness, people start uh, buffeting you and start talking, speaking bad about you and to you and, and jumbling up your words. And so you can see the times are approaching. You can see it's coming yes. to pass. So. Amen. Definitely is. So, knowing these things, we understand that we have to endure in righteousness unto the end to be saved. It's not just once we believe we're saved. We have to actually, we have to believe. Now we've started the process. Then we have to learn the doctrine, grow in the doctrine, and be consistent in the doctrine. Stay in it, being an example of a believer continually unto the end so that we may be delivered. And the scriptures show that it's through our faith and our works that's going to save us, not just our belief alone. Can you read Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 5 to 8, please? For well, like as all that is made in the world hath the beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonderful and powerful works, and endings and effects and signs. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils. And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Notice in verse 7 said, Every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. So we see this deliverance, this salvation, this saving that we're looking for, it comes by works and faith through our belief. Nothing has changed because even Yache told a woman that faith has saved thee, right? We read about that in Luke. 
and remember what was the works that exemplified her faith, her love that she abounded in. So you can see it's the same calling that we're in here now. We have to exemplify our belief through our love unto all and in obedience unto our Lord Yahche. That is what is going to cause us to be delivered from the perils to see the salvation of Allah Hayyam in his land. What's interesting as well, he said, shall see my salvation. We had started off with finding out who his salvation was. Because remember, Simeon in Luke 22 and 30 said, his salvation was Yahche. He said, I have seen thy salvation. So the salvation that the people are going to see is Yahche actually coming in the clouds with his angels within the 400 years. As the prophecy says in 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 28, please. For my son Yahche shall be revealed in those that be with him. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. That lets us know that it's going to be within the 400 years in these end times that Yahche is going to come. And he is that salvation that the people are going to be looking for, rejoicing unto. Knowing this, therefore, that we have some time to wait because we have to endure unto his coming. For those of us who are appointed to be here unto his coming, Lord willing, we be counted worthy for whatever portion he may have for us if we continue in the faith. And for those also who are appointed to make it unto the time of the false prophet to be a testimony of his name unto the nations. Knowing all these things, we have to work out our salvation with faith and trembling unto the end because we have a trial before us, brothers and sisters. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, please. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is Allah which worketh in you, both to the will and to do of his good pleasure. So that gives us comfort to know that it's Allah working in us. That's why we have to guard him with such reverence and, and, and honor towards him so that he will be pleased to continue strengthening us in the faith. And he, Paul said, um, for it is Allah that worketh in you to both to, to will and to do of his good pleasure. And important for us to understand his pleasure as well. His pleasure is not in wickedness so that we may know that we must strive through faith to overcome wickedness and evil so that we do not fall to any of our form or pleasures. Can you read Psalm chapter 5, verse 4, and Sirach chapter 35, verse 3, please? For thou art not a Allah which hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. That's right. He doesn't, there's no dwelling with Allah while we're dwelling in evil, because he has no pleasure in these things. And let's continue to see what pleases him so that we may have our understanding for our growth. Sirach, please. Uh, Sirach 35 and 3. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord, and to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. There we see what we're called unto. And all these things that are, are done through faith, faith that when we do right, we may be forgiven for our former sins. This is the hope in his mercy that pleases him. Jack, can you jump down to Psalms chapter 147, verse 11, please? Yes. You. Ahia taketh pleasure in them that fear him, and those that hope in his mercy. So we have what? Please, we know from the Acts of John what pleases Yache. We have from Dave, David, the preacher, what pleases Ahaya. Therefore, knowing the times we are in, let's take exhortation from the beloved Paul on how we are to operate in these times that is to come. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 through 14, please. And that knowing the time. And now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we have believed, than when we believed. The night is far spent, 
the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife or envying, but put on the Lord, Yahweh Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So that's what we're called unto. That's our awakening, to give no provision to the lust of the flesh, to fulfill any of its desires, but to make room for our Lord to dwell in us richly, for our Lord to rejoice in us by the fruits of the Spirit, which we can know through Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 24, please. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh within the afflictions and love. Sabbath to tell them, everyone. We hope everybody is having a wonderful Sabbath today. We just want to let everybody know that we are going into the Feast of Dedications starting tonight when the sun goes down, completely down. There's no more light in the sky. You are officially in the Feast of Dedications. Uh, we hope everybody enjoys it. We hope everybody did the preparations that they got before the Shabbat day, everything that you needed for the feast, and that everybody enjoys the feast day. Uh, it is an eight-day feast, just so everybody remembers. The first day is a holy convocation, so no work must be done. And you also can cook and clean up your cleaner areas in, on that day. And also, going to the eighth day is also another holy convocation. But also remember, the seventh day, the next Shabbat day coming up, is a new moon feast day. So you actually have two feast days that you have to prepare for. So we hope everybody enjoys it. We just wanted to make sure that everybody got the update to understand that the feast day is coming in tonight. And we hope everybody enjoys it. May Ahaya bless all you all, and may Yahweh keep you. Shalom.